Hello guys, welcome to the second video in the series. So this video is going to be on the heart and core of the subject and as you can see it is operational amplifiers. Now this video is going to be the most important video in the series. This is where you can get your basics clear so that the entire subject becomes really easy for you. So without waiting, let's get started. Now let us break down the term operational amplifier. So let's start with amplifiers. So what is an amplifier? We all know an amplifier takes in an input signal and produces an amplified version of the input signal. So for example, you have a sinusoidal signal as input. So when this signal is passed through the amplifier, it will produce an amplified version of the same input signal. And now coming to the word operational, it basically means we can perform various mathematical operations, for example addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, etc. using this amplifier. So together, operational amplifier is an amplifier that is used to perform various mathematical operations. And this operational amplifier is also known as op-amps. So as you can see, this OP comes from the operational word and the amp comes from the amplifier word. And throughout the entire course, we will be using this term to refer to operational amplifiers. Now coming to the circuit symbol, an op-amp basically looks something like this. It has at least five terminals. Among them, two are input terminals one output terminal and two bias voltages. Now the input terminals are of two types. One is the non-inverting input terminal which is denoted by a plus symbol and the other one is the inverting input terminal which is denoted by the negative symbol. So the commercial ICs that we use in our labs is the IC mu A741. It is a 8 pin mini dip that is dual inline package IC whose schematics looks something like this. So it has 8 pins. Pin 1 and pin 5 are used for offset that I'll be talking about in some other video. The second pin is our inverting input. So as we can see this negative sign is our inverting input which is our second pin. The third pin is our non-inverting input which is denoted by the plus symbol as I discussed in the previous slide. The fourth and seventh pin are our bias voltages. The 8th pin is not connected and the 6th pin is for our output. So this is the schematic of our mu A741 IC which is our op-amp. Now let's see some calculations with respect to the op-amp. So suppose V in 1 and V in 2 are our input voltages. V in 1 is our non-inverting voltage and V in 2 is our inverting voltage. And suppose A is the gain of the amplifier. So the output of this operational amplifier will be calculated as V out equals to A into the difference of these two input voltages which is V in 1 minus V in 2. So the difference between these two voltages are taken and it is multiplied by the gain of the amplifier to produce the output of this op-amp. One thing to note here is this V in 2 is our inverting input terminal that is why we should subtract V in 2 from V in 1. So thus we get the output of this operational amplifier as V out equals to the gain of the amplifier into the difference in input voltage. So this equation will be used throughout the entire course in order to understand the workings of the amplifier. Now continuing with the concept as discussed in the previous slide, we have this op-amp given to us. We can see the inverting terminal is grounded and the non-inverting terminal is given a voltage of Vi in. So what will be the V out in this case? So we know V out is A into the difference in the voltages. So here the voltage of the non-inverting terminal is V in and the voltage of the inverting terminal is 0 volt since it is grounded. So minus 0. So we get V out as A into V in. So suppose if we have a sinusoidal signal as the input like this. For the output what we will get is an amplified version of the same input. That is V out will be A into V i in. Now coming to the second example, here we can see the non-inverting terminal is grounded so its voltage is 0 volts and the input given to the inverting terminal is V i in. So we know V out equals to gain into the voltage of the 
non inverting terminal which is 0 minus the voltage of the inverting terminal which is V in. So the gain in this case will be minus A into V in. So here we can see this minus symbol which basically means this will have a 180 degree phase shift. For example, suppose we have an input signal which is something like this. So for the output signal, what we will have is a amplified version with a change in phase. So we can see the phase of the signal has changed by 180 degrees. So here the V out is minus A into V i in. I hope these two examples make the concept more clear and this is how you should be solving any numerical that is given to you on operational amplifiers. Now suppose we denote the difference between the voltage of the two inputs as VD and the gain of this amplifier is A. So we know V out will be VD into A. Now suppose the gain of the amplifier is in the range of 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6 which is very high and it is possible as well and suppose your VD given is 1 millivolt. So the V out you will get in this case is 1 millivolt into 10 to the power 5 taking the lowest limit so it will be 100 volts. Now is it possible to get such a high voltage using this op amp? The answer is the output voltage not only depends on the differential voltage and the gain but also it is dependent on these two bias voltages. So this bias voltages lie typically in the range of plus minus 5 volts to plus minus 22 volts and the output of this op amp cannot exceed this limit of the bias voltage. So this 100 voltage will not be possible. The maximum voltage an op amp can attain will be judged by the bias voltages that we give to the op amp and this bias voltages is a DC voltage. Now this will become more clear when we see the transfer curve for the op amp. So the voltage transfer curve of an op amp is plotted between the V0 which is the output voltage and the VD which is the differential voltage and we saw V0 will be A into VD where A is the gain of the op amp. So as we can see V0 is directly proportional to VD. So what we will have is we will have a linear curve between V0 and VD and the slope of this curve will give us the gain of the amplifier, gain of the op amp. But as seen in the last slide, the output of the amplifier will be restricted by the bias voltages. So after certain limit, the output voltage will saturate. And this voltage, let's say, is called the Vsat. And this Vsat will be less than V plus. And this minus Vsat will be greater than V minus. So this will be the maximum output that our op amp can achieve. So with this I would like to end this video, hope you like the video, in the next video I will be talking about the characteristics of an ideal op amp, so till then happy learning.